All right, the homie Douglas has been giving me shit about not doing good comics. And while, I mean, nobody's reading Pumpkinhead, I enjoy it. So let's just look at this cover. I'm really tempted to hang it up. I only have, what, yeah, I've only hung up five comics, but this color. God, I just, like, I wish this wasn't here. Like, just give me, show me Pumpkinhead being blue. And they did this in the last issue, too. They did, like, an orange cover. And that's just really great because Pumpkinhead is sort of this, like, borderline transparent corpse color. But I like him in blue. I know he's in autumn, but I don't know, I don't know what season blue is for. Summer? Because, you know, Pumpkinhead, he likes to go out sailing. I don't know, but okay. Let's get into this. So... We start off and we've got sort of the the drunk who is like, you dumb cops, obviously it's Pumpkinhead. And now the cops are starting to come around. They're talking about how it's not in the handbook of how to deal with these things. And he says, the deputy says, I'm not sure about this sheriff. We got a full-blown massacre on our hands. We don't have time for this. And she asks, and what exactly are those procedures, deputy? How many massacres have you investigated? Snap. That's a, I mean, that's such a good burn. She didn't even have to fucking look at him for it. She just, she's got faith in the burn. Those are the best ones. Fair enough, I get. Yeah, you got told that's why you're the deputy. But I bet my last dollar that whatever we should be doing, we shouldn't be chasing down old folk tales rattled off by the town drop. Wrong. God, you're so fucking wrong. Look, if you're a member of small town law enforcement, just, just go for the legends, go for the folktales immediately. I think I said in like the first issue of Pumpkinhead, this is the third one, yeah, third one, that if some shit goes down and people just end up all clawed up, just start from Werewolf and work your way back, because it's going to take you about the in half the entire population of the town is just going to be massacred before you even come to the conclusion like, oh, this may be supernatural. No, just start there. I mean, if it's a big city, obviously, don't. But if it's small enough, start at whatever local legends you got going around. Because that's going to cut your investigation time in half. And also cut in half the amount of time you're waiting to get slaughtered. Like, if I know I'm going to die, just do it. Just fucking do it. You pumpkin head ass pussy. So, and then Bunt gives us this thing where he says... Once it gets dark, that's when it'll come out again. It'll start hunting again. It can kill you just the same in the day. Thank you, Bond, because it's been so long since I've seen the movies. I can't remember if he ever does that. I, when I'm thinking Pumpkinhead, I'm thinking Nocturnal, because his head is a, is a unique shape. And maybe, just, maybe you don't want to literally show that off. But it likes to work in the dark, old Pumpkinhead. Likes to enjoy his work. Ooh. Does he have nocturnal vision? So what they do is they go to the house of the people who summon Pumpkinhead because they think it's some sort of feud between these two families. I mean, when you live in a, an area called a holler, which is like, that's too, that's too country for me to even know what that's about. I only know about it because of the Adult Swim show. The Harchie Holler, but it's literally like West Virginia, very, very secluded, deep in a mountain. It's like a mountain pit, I think. Yeah. I mean, if you live in a holler, I'm wrong, tell me. So they go to the, the house of the family who summoned up Pumpkinhead because I feel, yeah, they got, they got some splaining to do. They go to their house, and they also make mention that deputies from the next town have arrived. So we've got a couple more cops that may come into play. But they're not there yet. They're dealing with all the dead-ass bodies. So they get there, and of course, these hillbillies want nothing to do with the police. And then they hear a scream, and then they, they sort of... Well, they don't rush in, they just sort of... It's like everyone struck a pose. Look at that guy. That guy's hand. I don't know if that's an intentional, or if it's just like... Oh yeah, they're inbred, so this guy's got... Like a mono finger, but the, but and then I was looking at this. I was like, why? Where's all the furniture? You built the cabin. Did you just stop at 
not building the furniture? I don't understand what's going on. And so they run to this back room and they see the actual, this guy's father, so I guess the grandfather of the family, the patriarch, says everything's fine, Sheriff, everything's just fine. Which is, that's a red flag. You hear a scream and then somebody says it's fine? Fuck no. Tonight it begins again. Tonight. So you know, we learn that Pumpkinhead is about to be on patrol and then we cut to a trailer park because I mean it'd be weird if this comic didn't have at least one trailer park scene. And we see the people, these people are drug runners. This guy caused an accident that killed this family's like kid. But I mean they got so many kids. Look at all these kids. You're telling me the one that died was like gonna win the Nobel Prize or something? But you know what? Pumpkinhead, he doesn't ask those questions. Pumpkinhead doesn't think about a person's worth. He just likes to kill. So they're not giving this guy a gun because, like, frankly, he's a little crazy. Even for them, he's got a giant Confederate flag tattoo on his back. And he just looks, you know, he kind of looks like Spider Jerusalem. But I don't know if that's a deep cut. Then we see this Pumpkinhead silhouette is so fucking cool. I don't remember him having a tail that long, but yeah. Then I gotta skip a couple pages because I like this, and I feel like nobody, nobody's buying like these horror movie comics, so you gotta go get it. Gotta go get it. Gotta go get it. So, Pumpkin, he peels into this trailer like it's a fucking can of tuna, and, but then we see these new players. Okay, at the end of the last issue, I didn't show it because I told you to go buy it and you didn't listen. How many times have I gotta tell you something? Are you fucking thick? So, okay. Pumpkinhead lore, it's so not complicated, but it is if you're explaining it to a complete novice. So I'm going to try to make this as painless as possible. So, Pumpkinhead comes from this family, and they there's like a bunch of sisters, and each have their own demon. Pumpkinhead's vengeance, and he gets called upon the most. But there are still other demons that you can call upon, but nobody really wants to call upon them. So we got this... I don't even... I don't remember what demon that one is. This... Oh, look, Poison Ivy. That's just... She's Lust. Which, I don't know why you would ever call upon a demon of lust. Like, how you can't get your dick wet. It's that difficult. It's that difficult you gotta take a chance on this. Like that, I understand. If you're like, oh, yeah, I would call that. And then you're like, oh, no, 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 no. No. She's got, she's got wing bones and tentacles. That's awful. And then this is Sloth, which, why would you call up the demon Sloth? I'm already, do you know how much shit I have put off to even get to thinking about calling up a demon? I have shirked all my responsibilities and because once I get to the, should I call a demon? That's like last resort. So why would I call a demon who's even lazier than I am? So, okay, I'm not going to show a lot of this because a lot of it is cool demon fighting. So, you know, mm, you got to go, you got to go get it, got to go get it. So we see that Sloth has this sort of acid spray and these people still on the trailer are sort of like, uh, yeah, we can, we might just be able to wait this one out because demons hate demons because... She says, I don't know if I'm going to show it, but she says something like, they're kin, but they ain't kin that love each other. Be weird if demons loved each other. I feel like you can't. You're not allowed. Like in the demon, in the demon area of hell, there are no coffee shops and there are no bars. And there are no fancy restaurants. Can you just, everyone at home picture Pumpkinhead wearing a, just a bow tie? And this thing wearing a dress. <laughs> That, that, they don't get to do that. So we see a lot of back, cut back to the Kincaid's house where the cops are and they're like, what the fuck? And he tells them that, yeah, we called Pumpkinhead because this is the area of the country we live in and that's an option and you got to use all your options. A lot of, oh yeah, and then these two de other demons that appear and I have no fucking clue what the hell they're supposed to represent, but they look fucking crazy. Look, yeah, I'll show this. Look at this fucking thing. What? 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 
they all have these intense shoulder blade bones that come out, but... Oh, okay, I'll show that. Look at this! What what sin is this supposed to represent? I don't know. And then look at that guy's face. Uh, yeah, I don't think your Glock's gonna do a whole hell of a lot to that man. A lot more fighting. Oh, I'm so into it. I'm so into this because Pumpkinhead. Okay, and then yeah, that's all I'm gonna show because there's a lot of demon fighting and stuff. But um. See, I've never thought about... I haven't really thought about the Pumpkinhead movies, if I'm gonna be real. I know there are two. There may be more than that, and if there are, I'm just... I'm not ready to watch them at all. But, this is the kind of thing you can do with comics. You can explore a little bit. Because if Pumpkinhead is a demon that you can summon, obviously there are other demons that you can summon. But they haven't had the chance to do it, and I was trying to think, like, would that make a good movie if you had a bunch of demons... And Pumpkinhead fighting each other. I don't know. I don't know if it works as a movie, but I gotta tell you, it's working for me, especially with. I know I like, showed that like cool looking like what the hell is this even demon? But another one comes up and he's got like a a cane and the top of the cane is a human head because there are human heads flying everywhere. You just can't let them go to waste, and I feel like that is an icebreaker or a deterrent for people to speak to you. So I'm, I'm into it. Number four comes out next week. I'm gonna cop that shit. I put it on my pull list. So, you know, a comic I do enjoy, but still nobody's reading it, so. God, this cover. Should I hang it up? Should I hang it up? That's my question.